off season, a lot of the questions that we asked you were concerning the uh, questions about your, your rotation. What have you seen so far this spring in terms of guys like Tyon and uh, Kluber answering some of the, the concerns that you might have had going in at least three weeks in? What, what have they shown you? Still kicking. <laughs> um, I mean, it's early. You know, everybody uh, is getting their work in and, um, and, you know, so, so far so good, I guess is all I could say, uh, you know, we're, su it's such a early stage of the game that you could, this is all we could hope for at this stage right now, which is, you know, for the most part, everybody, but Clark Schmidt is taking the ball and getting their work in and, and, you know, working on areas of deficiency as well as building up their, their, uh, you know, their strength and endurance uh, as they prepare for a, a start of a season. And in some cases where they might slot, you know, whether it's in our pen, in our rotation or waiting in the wings at, at the alternate slight alternate sites slash spring training. So, but, you know, it's good to, you know, get to know, I think from the staff's perspective and then some of the teammates perspective, uh, you know, it's good to obviously start to, you know, introduce, you know, uh, the Klubers and the, uh, Jamison Tyons into the, the Yankee network and, uh, allow them to find their, their way. And, uh, you know, the early returns are, are, are good, but, you know, um, you know, the standing, the records in the standings are still the same where we've got no wins. We've got no losses, obviously, because the season hasn't even started yet. So we're just hopeful that, uh, that all the work eventually will pay off when, when it's lights, camera, and action, ready to go come April. Take another from Sweeney Murray. Hey, Cash, Aaron kind of joked about the idea that you'd really be lost without Carlos Mendoza. Um, I know he had a chance. He was under consideration for some managerial openings in the offseason. I mean, what do you think, basically, of just his skill set, how important he is to you, and what his future might be as a manager? Yeah, I think uh... – I think the industry recognizes who Carlos Mendoza is. You know, we started getting a number of uh, managerial requests on him and, and obviously, uh, you know, he took his, his shot at, you know, the managerial spots up in, you know, Boston as well as Detroit and they went other directions, but uh, um, Carlos is extremely talented, extremely organized, bilingual. Um, you know, the players trust him. You know, he's a superior candidate um, for the next chair, you know, within the industry. And um, and we're fortunate right now that he's here uh, and uh, he's served us well every step of the way in every capacity he's served us. Uh, and, um, you know, he's obviously you, you get nervous when you have somebody, you know, uh, I remember I've been around a long time now. So when Mark Newman was was running Major League Spring Training, uh, you know, for essentially being our camp coordinator under, you know, back in the day for Joe Torrey, you know, uh, then we transitioned to Rob Thompson for an extended period of time after Mark Newman. And when we trans transitioned from Mark to Rob, there was a great deal of trepidation. And when we transferred from Rob to Carlos, there was a great deal of trepidation because those prior people were so good at what they did and, and camps ran seamless. Uh, and, uh, and it's a real, you know, uh, you know, a real fortune for the New York Yankees that obviously Mendy um, allowed that transition to 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 go without a without skipping a beat. Clearly, um, he is organized. He is extremely knowledgeable. Um, you know, I don't know if anybody works harder than Carlos Mendoza, uh, and his ceiling is extremely high. So uh, um, I was bracing myself if we lost them uh it's one of those situations where it's almost like you put a, a, one of these players on the waiver wire and you're like man i like i don't know i called greg allen and told him we designate him for assignment for instance and it's like listen we acquired you this was not the intent but i'm selfishly hoping that we retain you but i know privately you're hoping you go somewhere else and same thing when you deal with these coaches that interview for higher positions and like you brace yourself to losing somebody like a carlos mendoza because they're almost impossible you know, quality talent to replace. And then you're thankful selfishly when they're still here. Um, but his day is coming without a doubt. He is going to manage a major league team. And I think he's going to be really good at it. We go next to Marley Rivera. 
Uh, hi, Cash. Uh, just a quick one on Aaron. How hard is it to keep your manager out of the dugout? Well, you know, he doesn't even sit in the dugout, right, during the games a lot, during spring training, all these guys sit along the side, you know, uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's really hard for him, probably, you know, it's not something he's used to. Uh, I can tell you this, though, I, I was, he, he FaceTimed me, uh, might have been seven ten. you know, I, don't, I couldn't tell you. Uh, maybe you guys know. I, I don't know when the exact time of his procedure was that afternoon, whether it's four or was it four thirty, five, five thirty. All of a sudden, we have that night game starts at six thirty, day of his procedure, uh, and at seven ten range, I get a FaceTime, and it's Aaron Boone, and I, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I pick up, and the the energy, uh, how good he looked, uh, the personality was so vibrant. I, he's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, how are you feeling? And he's like, I feel great. And I'm like, wow, it was just, again, uh, uh, a real tip of the cap to the, the expertise in the medical field and, and what these exceptional doctors in their specialty or areas are able to do for, for, uh, for people. It's just incredible. And, um, you know, for him to be, you know, to have to go under, have this procedure, and within an hour or so, next to him, he's, he's back up and running as if nothing really happened at all it was a, it was incredible so i know he's chomping at the bit to get back into uh that dugout back into the yankee uniform uh frustrated with the covid intake process but he understood that going in and uh but the greatest thing is that he just feels amazing uh and uh you know he shared with me how uh how amazing he feels now kind of in retrospect you know uh made him realize how how unamazing he was really feeling over the winter time um so thankful he he acted on you know his impulses and had it checked out but he you know the newer version of him is you know i'm good i'm happy for him and happy for his family and happy for us we go next to pete caldera hey brian uh, could you give us an idea of where luis severino is in his rehab and uh, if he has a date to throw his first bullpen yet I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't have, I, I don't want to give the wrong information. It's going really well. I know that, uh, you know, he's been doing his clack around throwing program and I believe he's due to get on the mound here shortly, but I can't, I, I don't want to give you the wrong information. I wasn't prepared for that. I apologize. Um, you know, obviously Matt Blake will have that Aaron Boone will have that. Um, I do get his rehab program and follow it, but I, I don't have the exact, uh, bullpen date. I'd rather tell you after rather than, He's supposed to do it on this date, just in case he doesn't do it on that date. So uh, it's probably a safer way to go anyway. We go to Dan Martin. Dan, please unmute. Brian, uh, it seems like you were able to uh, to slide in Gardner, Justin Wilson, and O'Day uh, after the trade of Adobino. Is that kind of what your mindset was when that trade was made? And what do you think of the, the depth that you were able to acquire there towards the end of uh, – I guess free agency or right before camp. Yeah, the Adovino deal was difficult. Um, we wanted to buy some flexibility. So obviously taking a talented pitcher that I know is going to do really well. I remember when I had to talk to Otto on the phone and and give him the surprise news that not only were you traded or or being traded, but you're going to our our tribal. And as we all know, we, we're a very we're completely right-handed lineup for the most part, and so. Yeah, and we play obviously Boston, you know, within our division, you know, more more times than you'd want. So, uh, you know, it's going to create great lanes for him, um, and he's going to have a hell of a year for them, I'm sure. Uh, so, uh, that wasn't an easy situation. But like again, if you it's you got to focus when you make these type of decisions of what's in it for you and what kind of benefits, you know, will this potentially create? No guarantees. Uh, and we were able to redeploy uh some of those uh funds that created that flexibility and and have it manifest itself ultimately in a darren o'day uh, and a justin wilson and and uh and obviously guardy and and you know that was the ultimate hope but there was no guarantee as you enter the process because free agency is a very fluid situation so you know the method to that madness was to buy flexibility you can utilize either now or later and uh you know it, it you know, we decided to, you know, with the conversations we had with the various players uh, in free agency that we were able to, to utilize it now. 
uh, and hopefully we're better served for that. Um, but you know, it was not easy to, to make those type of decisions because I think Otto obviously is going to have a, uh, a, a, a terrific year. I think as I've discussed, whether it's a Gary Sanchez or other people that did not have the type of years that in a 60 game season, I think that short sample size, not a good reflection of, of, you know, what Otto was. And I think what really Otto is, is more like the year before uh, the COVID season last year. And, and I think you're going to see that obviously reemerge, you know, in Boston, but we are excited about O'Day and we're excited about Justin Wilson and we're excited about, you know, obviously having Guardy return as well. And, and we're hoping those players, uh, you know, can help, you know, Aaron Boone and our staff, uh, you know, hit that win column a lot. We go next to Brendan Cuddy. Brendan. Hey, Cash, thank you for taking the time. What are the early reports you're getting on Gleyber Torres from coaches, teammates? Good. You know, I, uh, everything, uh, he's in good shape. Um, you know, I, I believe everybody here in camp, you know, was reported in, in top shape and, uh, and, you know, ready to get after it. So that's a really encouraging circumstance. That's, you know, that's the way you want it from, you know, uh, from, you know, the starting gate, which is what are you working with? And then, uh, and then go from there. And it sounds like everybody here uh, for the 2021 spring training showed up, uh, you know, ready to go. And um, I think a, another year of Eric Cressy uh, and his staff, uh, uh, you know, getting to know the players, uh, you know, kind of sell, um, you know, the programs, for instance, uh, you get some buy-in or a lot more buy-in, a lot more trust to it. So, uh, so we're a little bit more integrated than we were at this time last year. And I think obviously that's, that's a good thing as we search for higher ground of preventing injuries and having players in the consistently best position to, to perform to their, to their maximum. So he, all the information I get is really good. And you know, the, the hype surrounding your, your top overall prospect, Jason Dominguez, has been deafening throughout this offseason. Could you tell us what your early plan is for him? Uh, he's not, obviously not here in camp. Obviously, he's, you know, he's like everybody else in the non, you know, the, in, in the minor league population waiting for, you know, a minor league spring training report time and, and then see where it takes him. So I don't have a plan to articulate publicly on him other than the fact that, you know, he hasn't played his very first, he hasn't played a minor league game yet. Uh, you know, he'll go through mine, despite obviously his name, the notoriety, the signing bonus, he's now one of many that uh, will be competing for a spot on the roster and, and, uh, and what roster that turns out to be remains to be seen, but um, that all of those evaluations get, you know, will take place when we have the collection of all the talent and uh, including himself. So, so we need to get his career going, uh, just like a number of the other uh, prospects that we have that their, you know, uh, season or their development's been stalled because of COVID. And we look forward to getting um, minor league baseball back. So, you know, obviously there's no way to get better unless you're playing games. So uh, it's vitally important that that starts sooner than later. Thank you. We can move to Andy Martino. Andy, please unmute. I, speaking of the turnover in your bullpen, I mean, are you confident, Brian, that the bullpen that you have now has the upside uh, that you've had over the past couple of years? And it's really been a, a major strength of the team being down, not just out of Vino, but Canely. Uh, between the guys you brought in and the internal options you have, do you still think that will be the strength of your roster that it has been? I was hope I, I never feel confident about anything. I think it serves me best in the position I'm in. I, I certainly hope that it's a strength for us. Uh, you know, I think we lined it up for it potentially to be a strength for us and can and maintain a strength for us. But at the end of the day, baseball is a very, very bumbling, you know, circumstances we have all lived through. So uh, anticipated strengths, you know, have a chance to become weaknesses and, and areas of weaknesses and have a chance to become strengths. And it's just uh, managing through that over a course of a spring training in 162 is, you know, what defines your season. And so I think on paper, it looks good, but, uh, but then you have to prove it. And so I think we have, you know, we have a very strong bullpen on paper, but, you know, we got to wait and see how it plays out and certainly hope it is. And if it's not, then we'll have to make adjustments along the way, like any team fighting for something, you know, it has to do. And, uh, but, 
I think I feel like we're in a good place starting out, but uh, you know, like anything else, we'll just have to pay attention to it every step of the way. Of all the veteran options that you had, what, what appealed to you guys about O'Day in particular? You know, I feel like he, uh, he wipes out right-handers. He can get left-handers out. Um, you know, the makeup, you know, we had a lot of, you know, great feedback on his makeup from players that played with him. You know, obviously Britain had him in Baltimore. Um, always heard great things, uh, you know, regarding Darren O'Day from Buck Show Walter. And, um, you know, so his, his leadership, his mentorship, his experience as a veteran, you know, clubhouse presence has always been, you know, very strong. Uh, and, uh, but the fact that, you know, he continues to, you know, have a lot of success coming out uh, from a, you know, different arm slot, you know, um, is something that we haven't been able to, you know, we can't deny. And the fact that the, the price point was, was workable for us. We felt that he could be a viable member of this, uh, um, this bullpen, you know, and despite his age, he's, he's still going strong. So uh, certainly we hope that he can hold up for us. And I think you have to manage him, you know, a certain way, you know, uh, as, as you follow his career uh, to make sure you get the best results out of him. And I know he's in good hands with Aaron Boone and Matt Blake and Mike Harkey. Um, but, uh, but that experience, that veteran leadership, uh, the makeup, you know, he should fit right in and hopefully he stays healthy for us and can do the job that we expect. Thanks. Take a couple more. Ron Blum, go ahead. Hey, Cash. Despite how good your offense looks, does part of you get concerned that being that right-handed, you could be vulnerable at some key points of the season? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, there's going to be lanes for uh, for other managers to to navigate with if they have a, you know, uh, a starter slash reliever that, you know, is really difficult in right-handers that, you know, can make things difficult. There's no doubt about it. And, and of course, that's an area of, of weakness, the, you know, the fact that we're so right-handed and, uh, and don't have – um, as much mix and match, uh, there. Um, so it's definitely something that, that we're aware of, um, and we'll continue to, to remain aware of. And, and if things present themselves that, uh, that makes sense to swap something out for something else. Uh, but it just has to make us better by doing so. If it, I'm not going to do it, if it makes us at least perceived in a perceived basis, if it makes us worse, I'm not, not interested in that. Was that part of the import of getting Guardy back in the fold for this year just to have another left-handed option? I mean, it, it's certainly a quality that uh, has him stand out, but ultimately he is just still a very strong, viable, uh, really an everyday player, uh, you know, in most respects on the offensive side and defensive side. And then the leadership, you know, is unquestioned too. He, he's, he's one of the, the, the glues in that clubhouse, um, you know, I certainly like what he brings to the table um, from the clubhouse standpoint, but, but that's secondary to what he actually does on the field of play. I mean, he really impacts this team uh, and he would impact any team that way. He plays hard, he plays right. Um, and, uh, you know, he's successful on, on the defense and the offensive side. So he's, he's definitely a difference maker. And, and that certainly, you know, he was always someone we wanted to have back and, and we tried to articulate it, you know, uh, through his agency you know, out the, throughout the winter, which is, you know, it's something we have to wait for because, you know, uh, we have other areas that we want to address first and foremost, but that doesn't, you know, dismiss or dilute how important guard, uh, Brett Gardner has been to this franchise. And we didn't bring him back as a reward for what he's done in the past. We, we brought him back because we think he's going to impact us in the present. And uh, we know he can, and we know he will as long as, like any other player under that definition, as long as they stay healthy, you know, he's going to help us a lot. And uh, so we're lucky that he loves being here because I guarantee he had a chance to go elsewhere and, and probably make some more money than we had in terms of flexibility. So, uh, so I'm glad we're still, you know, working together. Thank you. Take the last two in queue. Max Goodman, go ahead. Hey, Brian. Hope your family's doing well. Speaking of the, the righty heavy lineup, you also brought in guys like Derek Dietrich and Jay Bruce this offseason, some moves that made a little bit of noise. Now that they've had a couple weeks under their belt at camp, what have you seen from them and, and what do you envision with those two guys this year? Yeah, they're, uh, they were brought in to, to get a legitimate shot to try to find a way to make this roster. 
uh, and it's a strong roster, but they're going to, you know, so far the early returns are strong. They, they, they look, you know, they look like they are going to make us have decisions and that's what we want. We want to have, we want to be in a position to make tough calls, uh, you know, and, uh, and, you know, so ultimately you, you're talking about two players that have different skill sets, but, but could impact us in a positive way. And, and uh, if camp continues to go the way they were going for both of those players so far, then at the end of the camp, we're going to have some tough calls to make, but uh, you know, they integrated themselves uh, within the, the group really well. Um, they're demonstrating in the early portion of this thing. And we are in the very early portion of this thing, but they're demonstrating why we had, had interest to bring them in. And, um, and so we'll see what, what transpires. Obviously we have a number of players that, that are here from the past, whether it's Mike Ford or amongst others that are left-handed um, some of the, you know, whether it's Dietrich with the viability he has on the infield side uh, or you have Jay Bruce and what he provides potentially at first in the outfield. And so there's going to be some interesting conversations to, to continue to have and, and, uh, the quality of the people seem really good. And, and um, so I, I thought that, uh, you know, our office, uh, Mike Fishman, for instance, uh, and, and others, uh, Matt Ferry and Tim Naring and, you know, uh, Jim Hendry and Matt Daly and, and uh, Dan Geis uh, and David Grabner, amongst others, Gene Afterman, um, have done a really nice job of, of you know, because again, you have to, you have to delegate. And a lot of some of these guys are negotiated directly by by some of these other people I just referenced uh, as non roster invites. And I think that we have a very deep, strong group of people to consider here over the course of the six week of a spring training. And and uh, that's a good thing. I think our, our staff did a good job of, of lining some alternative options up and, and protecting us as insurance policies if injuries hit or hey, if everything goes perfect, which you knock on wood, you hope it always does, trying to force their way into the mix. And um, I'm thankful that we have the depth that we have some considerations like that. Lindsay Adler, you have the last at bat of this Zoom session. Please unmute. Hey, Cash, I'm just curious if you guys have received any guidance from Major League Baseball or anything on vaccine distribution, how that may work, and how um, how as that becomes available throughout the season, that may sort of change what the season looks like. No, I haven't, you know, I do get offended when I get asked if I've been vaccinated yet, because I feel like that they're implying I'm older than I am. <laughs> so I have not been vaccinated. Uh, but I haven't gotten any, uh, any guidance on if, you know, there is anything on the horizon. I mean, I, I, I wake up every morning and watch the Today Show and, and, uh, and listen to the, you know, what's next and, you know, for the country in terms of, uh, you know, you get excited when you hear things are moving along and speeding up and, and more shots and arms for, for the population here in the United States. And that's obviously, uh, you know, exciting news for, for us all. Um, but where I, where we all slot in that assembly line, obviously take care of the people that need it the most first. And, and, uh, and then, you know, at some point, you know, our numbers will come up, you know, uh, and, so anyway, we're just waiting, uh, waiting on it. But I, I've had, I got no inside information that anything's on the horizon for us. But uh, they're taking good care of us, regardless. Right now, we're doing testing, you know, uh, the tier ones and tier twos, and we're getting tested every few days for the tier ones and every four days for the tier twos. And and I think everybody's, uh, you know, really complying with the masks and and being very careful, uh, you know, you know, within the the confines of our facility. And then obviously uh, when they're outside of our uh, facility, when they go home after work is done. So, um, so far so good.